Hello, welcome to this month's 30 Days of Goddess Practice. My name is Molly Reamer with 30 Days of Goddess and Bridget's Grove. And so welcome to November. Our theme for this month is Discover. And I'm really encouraging you to sink into the question of what are you discovering about yourself and what you need. This season, as we enter the dark part of the year, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, I find really invites a time of reflection and renewal of steeping and deepening. Our theme for December is actually deepen. So kind of the co-themes of discover and deepen or deepen and discovery, discover are happening in November and December. So really inviting you to sink into that question of what are you discovering about yourself and what you need. It can be, I find that the season naturally calls us to a time of inward reflection, a time of descent and renewal, of steeping in our own magic of looking inward, of discovering what it is that we know, of seeking clarity and hopefully finding clarity, coupled with the pull from the external world that says, go, do, make, be, do more, push harder, go to all the things, plan all the parties, buy all the presents. And those can be really, those can be, a, it can be challenging, the inward pull and the outer admonition, so to speak, admonishment, those can be almost feel in conflict inside of ourselves. So inviting you to listen deeply, to take as many opportunities to discover what your in, own inner voice of wisdom has to say. So before we launch back into this whole discussion of discover, I do invite you to take a nice deep breath and call yourself in, call your spirit back, center yourself right here in your body on this wild and whirling earth, so full of need and so full of magic, so full of possibility, so full of wonder, so full of sorrow, and inviting yourself to allow whatever it is that you feel right now to be okay, to let yourself feel how you feel and be how you are and inviting yourself to drop into the magic of your own place, where your own feet are. What is happening right where you are? What is the sky like? What is the land teaching you? What animals are active? What birds are passing through or out? What is happening in your own landscape right now? Your inner terrain, but also your external terrain, your your outer world. I find that the land we live on is a powerful, powerful teacher. And I find it deeply important to check in with that land every day, to watch what flies and creeps and moves and sings and shines and shares our world, shares our space, what shares our home ground. What can we bear witness to today? So welcome and thank you for being here, whether you are joining us for the first time this month or whether you have been maintaining a 30 Days of Goddess practice since we began in 2021. Welcome. There is a place for you and you do belong here, reminding you that this practice is here to hold you, to support you and nourish you and help you make your own discoveries about what best meets your needs. It is not here to tell you what to do. So. I'm starting with a poem about the path of devotion. The path of devotion is a promise to living, to the sacred and to yourself that unfolds in a spiral. One day, one pause, one step, one breath at a time. We are invited to come home again and again. We are invited to connect again and again. We are invited to begin again and again. We are invited to remember again and again. We are invited to notice again and again. We are invited to pause again and again, to keep our promises. We li oh, we keep our promises. We listen to ourselves. We li live our magic. We build our trust. We discover that when we show up for our own lives, the sacred shows up too. We discover the goddess magic, the sacred is everywhere, that our feet are always on temple ground. We learn that we are held and supported, nurtured and nourished, and so we return every day. We come to trust our longings as the doorway into connection. We come to keep our practices simple and sacred, to allow both joy and ease to find a place. We witness without fixing. 
we experience everyday awe and commonplace miracles. We discover that we can return home over and over, cross the threshold back into our own hearts with relief and delight. We see that each moment of practice holds meaning, whether the moment is golden or gloomy, for we are here, hands on our hearts at the center of our own lives, practicing the life-changing magic of noticing. So I hope this month, this November, will hold many moments of the life-changing magic of noticing. I hope you will discover the power, the process, and the practice of the life-changing magic of noticing. And so one of the things that I wanted to, as I said, core question is what are you discovering about yourself and what you need, though I have some other questions. This uh, particular, the things I've planned for this video are kind of a lot of quotes and a lot of questions. And so maybe that's okay. I think as we sink into the season, as we enter a pause, as we enter a time of respite, as we step into the cave of restoration, we find there are many questions. There are many questions and many things for which we may sense a, an understanding or a type of clarity dancing around the edges of our consciousness, but we find that we need a pause in order to really listen. And so one of the things that I'm coming back to over and over, and this is, I think, something that's gonna guide me into the new year as well, is how am I making things hard? How am I making things hard for myself? How can I keep it simple and sacred? That's the, what I call our online circles for 30 Days of Goddess in the Goddess Magic community. Those you can access by being on the mailing list or by being a, a member of the Goddess Magic community on Patreon, patreon.com slash goddess magic. That's a monthly circle that I hold. And I call it simple and sacred because that's what I want to remind us of. Like, keep it simple and sacred. Keep coming back to that. Keep coming back to what is simple and sacred. And so the question I'm asking myself is how am I making things hard? How am I complicating my own life unnecessarily? How can I keep it simple and sacred? My word for 2024 is liberate. And so that goes hand in hand with that. I'm toying with free as well and play, but how can we, how can we keep it simple and sacred? Where are we making things hard where they, it doesn't need to be? Life has hard enough things in it already without us adding to it through our own choices and actions. And then I've had some thoughts about rest as well. Wayne, this, I'm actually, Wayne Muller, Wayne Mueller says, Sabbath is more than an absence of work. It is not just a day off when we catch up on television or errands. It is the presence of something that arises when we consecrate a period of time to listen to what is most deeply beautiful, nourishing, or true. I really find that 30 Days of Goddess in Daily Practice offers us the chance each day to experience what is most deeply beautiful, nourishing, and true for us. But and it's a kind of a daily point of Sabbath. So I know there, so the word Sabbath can have a loaded meaning for people, but if we're thinking of that in our own lives as not just the absence of work, not just a day off, but as something replenishing and restorative. I have shared before a quote about how the antidote to depletion is not rest, it's restoration. And so what do you need to feel restored? What do you need in terms of restoration? And then, so I have several quotes on this theme of kind of rest and things like that. I have a quote from Nicola Jane Hobbs who says, instead of asking, have I worked hard enough to deserve a rest? Start asking, have I rested enough to do my most loving and meaningful work? So that is something that I'm coming back to as well. Have I rested enough to do my most, my most loving and meaningful work? And then I had a quote that I re-encountered in the Kitchen Witch Companion, the new book from Sarah Robinson and Lucy Pierce of Womancraft Publishing, but I had read it for the first time in Untamed by Glennon Doyle. So it's a quote from Glennon Doyle re-quoted in the Kitchen Witch Companion. And I think this is really important. So it says if women, but we can include any people, if women trusted and claimed their desires, the world as we know it would crumble. Perhaps that is price precisely what needs to happen so we can rebuild truer, more beautiful lives, relationships, families, and nations in their place. Maybe Eve was never meant to be our warning. Maybe she was meant to be our model. Own your wanting. Eat the apple. 
And then that brings me to a quote from Monica Shu in The Goddess Versus the New Age, where she says, and when such an effort is made, like culturally, religiously, worldwide, to sever the goddess, we have to wonder if that is where the power is. Anybody who's on a goddess-centered path, who's been around for you know more than a couple of years, knows that yes, that is exactly what patriarchy tried to do, is sever where the power is. And then the other thing she said is, and I, I, need, I need to come back and find this, I reheard in a audio that I had made multiple years ago. And so I'm not 100% sure it really comes from that Goddess versus the New Age book. I think it did. I'll have to re-listen to that audio and see if I can puzzle it out. Or maybe I'll just accept that this is where, this is what the information I have right now. But so she also says, I gave the goddess my darkness and she showed me my deepest magic. We have a complicated relationship, especially in the Western world with dark, the notion of darkness instead of darkness as a place of power where all good things take root and are nourished and grow into wholeness we think of darkness as somehow bad or wrong etc cetera, etc cetera. but this idea that I gave the goddess my darkness and she showed me my deepest magic I find that really juicy and really a uh, great quote so anyway thinking about that as we move into this dark part of the year as well and then other questions to consider for this month that I really, I'm asking myself and I invite, I offer them to you as well, is what if you give yourself what it is you most need and crave? What if you actually let yourself have what you want? Deep down, what you truly want. I find that this time of year often holds, as I mentioned, the twin poles, but there can be, there, there can be a, a point of not confusion exactly but but we when are we when do we grant ourselves grace and a pause for rest and when do we hold ourselves back and stay too small so i say often that we need to create lives that are both big enough and small enough to hold us too so we don't want to crumple down our magic or put the lid on our power but we also don't want to overextend ourselves so some questions that i'm revisiting from last november's video are the questions of what is the difference between stretching into growth and change. What's the difference between stretching into growth and strange, change and feeling yourself stretching into strange? That could be good too. But when you feel yourself stretching into growth or change and becoming stretched thin, like there's a line there between stretching too far so you're stretched thin or stretching into your potential and your potential for discovery. So I find there's like this liminal space where we're sitting, where we have to consider, are we stretching into growth and change or are we becoming stretched thin? Likewise, this was another question from last November is, what do you sense arising for you rather than taking effort? So sometimes we feel things arising and I find that with inspiration, with ideas. So I've been working on these monthly guidebooks for the Goddess Magic community and that feels like something exciting, something that arises. It doesn't feel like it takes effort. It feels like I'm noticing that it's there and I'm seizing it and bringing it forward. And that's exciting. That's liberating. That expands the heart. That expands the chest. That opens you up. That brings joy. And then if it feels like it's effort, like I have to get this ready. Oh no, I have to write this. I said I'd do this. I had to get this book ready. That closes you in and makes you feel small and confined and trapped almost by your own creations. So I've done both. I have both experiences. And uh, so in your own life, what do you sense arising for you versus taking effort? How do they feel differently in your body? Arising effort, arising effort. Both of them can take work. Both of them can take work. It's not, we're not saying everything has to be easy in order to be right. Sometimes things that are very right take a lot of effort, but there's a lot or a lot of work. A lot of things that are good in our lives take work. And I think we make a mistake sometimes by thinking that it has to feel easy. And then likewise, going back to the same question at the beginning, we don't have to make things harder than they have to be either. So there's a lot of sitting in the middle that happens and feeling into it and trusting trusting and listening and reevaluating and beginning again and again. So that is, I thought that was worth revisiting. And then there is a quote as well from William Morris. The true secret of happiness is taking a genuine interest in all the details of daily life. And again, another quote from Sarah Robinson, who's the Kitchen Witch Companion author, but also the author of Yoga for Witches. And this really, I think, encapsulates that sitting in the middle. 
And so she writes, in yoga class, I often remind my students that we can be peaceful and powerful, calm and strong, all in the same breath. I think there is peace to be found in the acceptance of all these contradictory powers within us, finding a way to stand within this unknown and unknowable. We are gloriously complex and contradictory in a world that loves boxes, snap judgments, and 100% certainty. People may find this inability to define you uncomfortable, but this is a reminder that you do not owe anyone an explanation. Your rich inner world need not mean anything to anyone but yourself. A person can be called a witch for merely knowing and for owning her knowledge. And to some, for strange reasons that may include fear, power, and jealousy, a woman who knows is dangerous indeed. Communicating, I am knowledgeable, powerful, and I make my own choices about how I use these strengths can be a real challenge to the status quo. So I liked that one as well. And then, uh, so... I have a couple more questions. One is about expansiveness. Our theme for last year was expansiveness and possibility. And I was speaking of how I had written my In the Temple of the Ordinary book that year. Now this year I've written my second volume in the Temple of the Ordinary, so in the Temple of the Ordinary volume two. And I was feeling a real sense of expansiveness that came from completing a project of open, wide open potential. This year I'm not feeling as much of that sense of expansiveness, but I still wish to lean into the expansive whenever possible. That sense that of what liberates, of what opens instead of confines, of what flings doors open instead of constricts. And then the final question that I wanted to share, these are from our snapshot card for this month, is what is the sweet song of your own approval? I found myself last year, I think at some point, somebody gave me a compliment about something and I said to my husband, ah, the sweet song of approval is my favorite thing to hear. And then I thought, what's the sweet song of my own approval? Because essentially something that I've come to learn is that people in general, people will always want more from us. Like we can kind of never quite be everything to everybody, even if we try, even if we're a type A perfectionist, perfectionistic oldest child, we still can't be everything that people want from us. And so we need to listen to the sweet song of our own approval, the sweet song of our own approval, our sense of satisfaction and accomplishment with finishing a book, with working on something that matters to us, with doing something that we care about. That's, we need to listen to that sweet song of our own approval. So I wanted to bring us back to that question as well. And then I had a quote that I really think is great from Brianna Weist in The Pivot Year, which is a book I'm, I don't have, but I'm gonna buy. And this is what she says. You may believe that living life to the fullest is seeing every country in the world and quitting your job on a whim and falling recklessly in love, but it's really just knowing how to be where your feet are. It's learning how to take care of yourself, how to make a home within your own skin. It's learning how to build a simple life you are proud of. A life most fully lived is not always composed of things that rock you awake, but those things that slowly assure you it's okay to slow down, that you don't always have to prove yourself, that you don't need to fight forever or constantly want more, that it's okay for things to be just as they are. Little by little, little, you will begin to see that life can only grow outward in proportion to how stable it is inward. That if the joy is not in the little things first, the big things won't fully find us. And so I have a poem that connects to that that I'd written a while ago, but I feel it feels appropriate for this season of discovering. Someday I might have time for the mystical life of which I dream. Time to plant an herb spiral in a lavender field. Time to consult the stars and sit with endless cups of tea and honey and listen. Time to make tinctures and healing brews, to beekeep and moon gaze, to sit with my oracle cards spread all around me and soak in what there is, to have great swaths of open space in which to explore my magic and spin my spells. For now, I celebrate the mystical life I actually live. It is here that I plant each seed of what I dream might be. 
It is now that I watch butterflies and listen to hawks and bathe in birdsong and kneel in violets and dialogue with dandelions. It is now that I walk for miles seeking mushrooms, carrying my own capable form on steady feet across moss and stone, hill and thorn. It is now that I lean against mulberry trees and pine trees and tall gray boulders and reach for raspberries even though blood dots my arms and sweat streaks my skin. It is now that I write books and tell tiny stories, sit in the sun each morning with my pen and the taste of new prayers on my tongue. It is now that I moon bathe and wind dance, now that I slip into the river and become baptized once more into my own wholeness, songs on my lips and poems in my blood. It is now that the pulse of purpose beats in me, now that I create and savor, now that I tend and bless, now that I discover I am already living what I dream. So may you discover that you're already living what you dream. And may you ask yourself that question of is what happens when you start from center? What happens when you start where your feet are? So as the quote asks, the uh, knowing how to be where your feet are. So what happens when you start where your feet are? What happens when you start from center? That is the question that I hope you will discover an answer to this month and that I hope you will come back to again and again, asking yourself to consider what happens when you start where your feet are. What do you discover when you start right where you are? And so then I am going to close now with one final poem about daily practice, the magic of checking in each day and discovering how we are right where we are. Each day we are offered invitations to pause, to recollect ourselves, to begin again, to choose once more. Each day we are invited to reclaim our attention, to call our spirits back and find ourselves at home once more in our own bodies and breaths. Each day we are invited to step into the sacred, to remember our own belonging, to inhabit our own wholeness with joy. Each day we are invited into the full living of our lives in all their many complexities and concerns and their delights and discoveries. Each day we are invited to claim our power and our magic, to step with trust back into the center of our own lives, where our feet are. Each day we are invited to become sites of our own liberation. Each day a reclaiming, each day a renewal, each day an invitation to begin exactly where we are. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for taking part. Remember that you can go to 30daysofgoddess.com to print out your snapshot cards. If you're a member of the Goddess Magic community, you will get your Winter Wisdom Deepen and Discover book at patreon.com slash goddessmagic. And may you take time to discover. May you take time to listen. May you feel centered in your place of power. And may you know that you have wholeness to draw upon whenever you need it. May you also remember, sometimes it's just the pause that you need. Sometimes it's just the taste of tea on your tongue and raindrops on your skin that you need for restoration and renewal. Thank you so much for being here and keep living your magic. Bye-bye. <laughs>